gonna say good morning. Good morning, good morning everybody. Uh oh, uh oh. She's looking at herself. That's why. Nah. -uh. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It is Monday morning and we are um, late in our uh, commentary today because we are following a different schedule just for today. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, we're still uh, wrapping up breakfast. But as usual, we will have our commentary. Uh oh, look, what are you staring at? <laughs> what are you looking at there? Okay. So, the gospel for today comes from St. Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. And this is the story of how our Lord, after hearing uh, about the death of John uh, the Baptist, He withdrew in a boat uh, toward a certain place by Himself. Then the crowd started to follow Him there. Okay? And there were plenty of people. And then the disciples said, send them home already, because they're already tired and they're hungry. But then our Lord said, Nope, don't, don't send them home. Give them food yourselves. But then the apostles said, We have no food. We have nothing here. We only have five loaves of bread and two fish. Okay? Then Jesus told them, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were all satisfied. And they picked up the fragments left over. Eh? And guess how many? There were 12 wicker baskets full of leftover. And those who were there were about 5,000 men, not even counting women and children. Just counting the men, there were 5,000. So you can just imagine. Maybe there were 10,000 people. Maybe there were 15,000 people. You never know, right? But there were plenty of people that Jesus fed. Out of what resources? Where did he get what he fed them? Five loaves and two fish. two fish, right? Five loaves, two fish. How can five loaves of bread feed thousands of people? So it was a big miracle, right? One of the two big miracles as far as eating, I mean, feeding crowds are concerned because the other one, the count was about 4,000 people, right? Following Jesus uh, in the mountains. Okay, what does this gospel mean? help us understand today what is what is uh, a lesson we could learn from this besides besides uh, again being given proof of the uh, divinity of Jesus Christ right where uh, he can perform miracles in order to show everybody that well he was indeed the Messiah he was the Christ okay you get this girl for a while okay and that uh, and that uh, he needed to do these miracles in order to um, prove to people that he was indeed the Son of God. Now, but for us, what would be a practical lesson to learn from this particular gospel? So remember how just a few days ago we were talking about doing things, doing ordinary things extraordinarily well. Right? And that is where our sanctity um, uh, can be can be founded, right? Doing things with virtues. So this gospel today is kind of like a tie up to that one, dovetails to that message. Also, here we can be reminded to, you know, give God our all. The disciples only had five loaves. And two fish. That's all they had. Nothing else. And our Lord takes that. Takes what the disciples can offer. This is all we can offer you. And Jesus takes that. And does a very big miracle. Out of the very, very, very little offering. That the apostles gave him. And laid to his feet. 
So this image of very little, that's who we are. Okay? That's who we are. We are nothing before God. We are really very little. Really nothing, not even little, before the greatness of God. But God is asking us to give Him not part of ourselves, not something that is in excess of us. He is inviting us to give us, to give Him rather, all of us. He is inviting us to surrender everything we have to Him so that He can use our offering, He can use us to create big miracles for everybody, including ourselves. Okay, so that's a beautiful image that our Lord wants to remind us of here. God can do big miracles from the little that we can give Him. The little that we can offer. By way of what? By way of our sacrifices, by way of our effort, by way of our talents, by way of our going out of our way to do things for other people. Right? All He's asking is, Give Him what we've got. Meaning, in practical terms, that means in anything we do, we have to do our best. We have to give Him our all, all our energies, all our efforts, all our talents. Everything. Give it to God. In the, in the little things that you do, do it 100% and more. Give it everything you've got. And God is going to turn that effort, that talent, that offering into something magnificent, something great, something marvelous. Where not only His glory will be manifested, but even us, we will also shine with God. Because we have given God everything we have. So, you know. In practical terms, this can also mean uh, look, look at the things that you do every day. Look at the things you do every day. Let's just take the example of your studies. Right? What have I always been telling you? We have never demanded that you get straight A's. We have never asked of you that you should perfect your exams. Right? We never did that. We never asked of that. What has Papa always asked? From each one of you. Eh? As far as your studies are concerned, what have we asked from you all the time? I cannot hear you. Do your best. To do your best. To do your best. Eh? As long as you can honestly tell me that, Papa, I really did my best. I gave my all. I gave everything I could give to this effort. That's all that's important. As long as there's honesty there that you really gave your best. And look, look what God does to that best that you offer. Right? Well, we have uh, Dean's Lister right here right? from MJC. We have a straight A student right here. We have somebody there who just passed her first uh, college uh, uh, course while she's just freshman in high school right we've got this other boy here who is uh, two grades above his grade level we have another girl over there who's also doing very well with her schoolwork okay and everybody else just doing their best and look at how it yields plenty of fruit okay just giving your all, doing your best. That's just one example of what doing our best and giving our all can do for us. Now, could you imagine if that's what you do in everything you do? In everything you do, even just washing the dishes, mopping the floor, sweeping the floor, wiping the tables, dusting frames and, and furniture. If you give your 100%, Everything, all your effort, everything you've got to God, God turns that very menial work 
into something very great for you. You know one of the greatest gifts, one of the greatest things that happens? Maybe you're not going to get a straight A just by dusting uh, 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 furniture or wiping the floor, but you're going to get 100% graces from God that will turn your menial uh, uh, job, your nondescript job that you put 100% on into something marvelous for your souls. Okay? God is going to give you plenty of gifts, plenty of benefits from giving yourself a hundred percent. Okay? So for example, again, other examples we can give. If you give your hundred percent to fight against temptations and not be wishy-washy and not to be uh, 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 um, you know, indecisive, but you fight temptations hundred percent, Okay? You overcome your character chain challenges 100%. Give it your all. Okay? You, um, you know, you couples out there who are afraid of having children okay? uh, for a fear of something you don't even know in the future. But if you give it your all, then God is going to give you blessings, plenty of blessings for your generosity. That's the word I've been trying to make click in my head. <laughs> generosity. Right? Generosity is all that God is asking from us. Giving Him 100% of who we are. Okay? Not just a little bit. Not just a percentage. Not just a big chunk. But all that we've got to God. Okay? So one of my pet peeves is, you know, couples who don't want to have many children. Because they are afraid of the future. Afraid of the future. Afraid of the future. Afraid of whether they can provide for their children. What the heck? I mean, <laughs> you know, this kind of fear is, has, has no place to people who have faith in God. And who are willing to work and give their 100% and more to the vocation that God has given them. I mean, I cannot even begin to tell you our story. And that book, by the way, Braving Parenthood, is coming out, hopefully, if I... Well, it already came out. It's already a bestseller on Amazon. But if I finish editing, the, you're going to have the, the paper copy of that. And that is a story of how we came from nothing to where we are now in 10 years, 12 years. Because, simply, we did not hold back. We did not think of what will happen in the future when we have nothing today. Wrong economics, you young couples. Wrong economics. Okay, give God everything you've got. And look, you're going to take home plenty of uh, leftovers. <laughs> plenty of leftovers. Let's be generous with God because God cannot be outdone in generosity. God cannot be outdone in generosity. See? Let's be generous to God in everything we do. Look, look, look at this baby. Who would want to have this baby? See, Ava is there, number seven. Number seven, right? If we <laughs> held back, if we allowed our fears to get the better of us when we were beginning our family life, we're not going to have this. Nah. Hmm? But no, I won't exchange her for the world. Okay. Anyway, so that's the lesson for today, everybody. Be generous to God. Be generous to God in everything and give Him your best. And He will never be outdone in generosity. Okay, have a good day, everybody. Have a good week ahead of you. Hope to see you every morning. Today we are a little late, but uh, hope to see you every morning. Okay, bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Eva, bye-bye. There, she knows how to do it. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.